Playing with several of you guys uh, trimmed down quite a bit. Both Casey, we have obviously before and Taki. Mm -hmm. What was I'm sure that was part of a plan uh, yeah. to have multiple you know zeros and shades lose 10 plus pounds. Mm -hmm. What went into it? It's just, it's just really their mindset. Just coming into camp, being prepared, um, having the experienced guys, veteran guys. You know they know and understand what they got to do to make sure that they're in peak performance. So as you get closer to games, Taki's done a great job in the off season, in the summer, getting with Coach Love and. And the rest of the staff there to get his body right, and it shows when he's out there. Casey, credit obviously the relationship you have with him and why he's here. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what were you selling him on and getting him here? Because I'm sure he had lots of opportunities where he could have had a more sure and less deep depth chart mm -hmm. on the inside of the defensive line to go play and be a starter and not really have to compete that hard. Here, mm -hmm. it's it's a really deep group. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing I love about Casey. He's not afraid to compete. You know, he wants to come to a place where he. He can get challenged every day. He wants to get to a place, you know, he's got Coach LePoy as a defensive coordinator, Coach Dan Landing as a head coach that's also a defensive guy. So there's a lot of coaches here that are going to help him develop and improve his game. And that's what I love about Casey the most is that he's not afraid to, he's not afraid to compete and he wants to come and be a part of a winning program. How are Casey and Jordan going to help you along the defensive line? What, what skills are they bringing to bolster this group? Uh, just – Physicality, they got experience. Uh, both of them graduated, you know, dealing with more mature young men, um, guys that are basically coming into this season like professional football players. They're, they're just locked in and trying to be the best football players they can be. Uh, they got bulk size and speed, so that's going to help us in the trenches and uh, just add some really, really quality depth for us. So. You mentioned they both graduated, but I think they're both like all academic guys, to all conference all academic guys. It's like, is that reflected in, 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 in come across in their football in any way? Yeah, and it's, you know, they take pride in making sure that they represent the group the right way. You know, we take we talk about that a lot in our room. You know, we talk about playing like a duck, and there's a standard that we live by. It's not just on the field, it's also off the field. So uh, it's, a, it's a really, really big expectation of mine that my guys try to exceed as much as they can on the football field, but also in the classroom. And, um, you know, that's something that's really, really important to me, that they all get their degrees. And, you know, hopefully everything works out where they get a chance to play on Sundays. But one thing is to make sure you get that degree because that's going to help you for the rest of your life. How different is your room compared to Spring, Tony, in that, I mean, there's seven guys, not just Casey yeah. and Jordan. It's right. three guys who are out and two fret. I mean, yeah. you got more than a, you got a three deep, basically, yeah. who's here in addition yeah. to who you already yeah. had. It's a lot funner coaching now than it was in the spring. Um, having Dorless back. Um, having Popo back, also having Keon. I mean, those are guys that play quality reps here. Uh, the leadership from Brandon Dorlins has been awesome. Um, he's done a great job in just setting the tone. He's the alpha of our defense, and, um, and the rest of the guys follow after him. And, you know, I think just being able to have those three guys and adding the, uh, the grad transfers with Casey and, and Jordan and adding Taki too as well, you know, I feel really, really good about our depth in terms of who we're putting out on the field. What does Dorless do to become the alpha of this defense? Uh, he's, he's matured a lot, you know, and, and, you know, he sees that it's his time. You know, he's he's been, uh, you know, with Kayvon Thibodeau for a while, and now him not being there, you know, I think he's really taken upon himself to be the guy to, you know, carry on a legacy where he can be a leader and make sure that this defense plays, you know, to its best capability. So. As you guys transition in camp and start getting into scrimmages, what are the sorts of things you look for in scrimmages? What are your, what are your main things you talk to your guys about that, you want to see from them in a scrimmage situation? Uh, just being stout in the run game. You know, definitely looking for knockbacks, uh, looking for affecting the quarterback. Uh, this is a deep group, and uh, knock on wood, everybody stays healthy. But they all got to compete. You know, everybody's trying to fight for reps, and that's what camp is all about. You know, everybody wants to play, but there's only so many reps to go around. So uh, this scrimmage and, and the next few scrimmages that we have, it's really, really important for these guys so they know and understand what's ahead of them tomorrow. But Dorless, where have you seen him kind of make the biggest improvement between spring and now? In the run game. You know, I think everybody knows that Dorless has the ability to go affect the quarterback and, and pass rush, but he's really focused on improving in the run game, um, doing a lot better job using his hands and getting off blocks, and then just the effort to the football. Um, I think in the classroom, too, he's grown a lot. You know, he's asking graduate-level questions. He's taking great notes. Uh, he's holding his, his uh, teammates accountable and making sure that they take notes, too, as well. So I'm really pleased in terms of where he's progressing and how he's coming along so far. What do you want to see him still do? Like, what, what can he do to kick it to that next level? I think there's always, you know, always room for improvement. You know, we always talk about in our room, good, better, best, you know, and never being satisfied of, you know, you, you've arrived, right? So 
Um, there's everything from getting better at pass rusher, being more effective in terms of you know being clean on his pass rush, developing a power rush move. Um, he can win on the edge too as well. And then in the run game, we talk about you know just pre-snap procedures, right? Just knowing when it's run and pass. You know, trying to find answers to the test for the ball snap, like all those football IQ things that I think Brandon can really improve on that'll help him be more effective when he's in the game. DJ is relatively new to the defensive side of the ball. What have you seen from him? Who's that? I'm sorry. DJ Johnson. DJ Johnson. Oh, I love DJ. I mean, he's a guy that's going to create havoc in the backfield for a lot of teams. Um, he's a guy that has unique size and, and power. You don't see it too often from a lot of players. And just really excited about him. He works really hard. And uh, he's a guy that, you know, along with the front that we have, that's going to be able to make a lot of plays for us. DJ told us he's the fastest guy on the team. How close do you think that is to the truth? Who's that? DJ Johnson. So he's the fastest guy on the team. I, I, close? <laughs> yes. I mean, his his GPS and, and his miles per hour and how he runs, uh, you know, there's no doubt. It's, it's unbelievable if a guy with that, uh, that size uh, can run that fast.